Gundos Games! <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Gendo Kashi here to talk with you about Riot's new old addition to League of Legends, Twisted Tree Line. Yeah, that's right, that old thing that no one ever played for the longest time. It's been updated. It looks cool, it looks amazing. The graphical update um, makes everything look really cool. Uh, lots of spirits floating around everywhere. It's appropriately creepy and mystic. Lots of fog everywhere. By the way, and unlike my usual sort of thing, I'm kind of just rambling on this one. Try and see how quickly I can do this video. Let me know in the comments below what y'all think as we go through this, and I would really appreciate it. The first and most noticeable thing about the map now that has changed is the jungle. As you might be able to see on the map here, the top jungle is almost entirely gone in favor of just one mob and a small path through it. The rest of the jungle is also very different. There is no more buffs. Green, black, and red all gone in favor of three different camps that are all always the same, which is nice. It's no longer random. There is one camp with a golem and a big golem, one camp with a wraith and two smaller wraiths, and one camp with a giant wolf and two normal wolves. It feels kind of neutered and vestigial that that's all we have left. There's no buffs, there's nothing to steal other than some gold from the enemy team, especially with the fact that they respawn every 50 seconds. But it's nice that they're always there now. So I think in general it's a positive, it just feels like there's less reason for there to be a jungle. However, um, well, before actually I get onto the topic of the altars, those things in the middle sitting there, let's talk about Vile Maw. That giant spider that sits up at the top. He has replaced and in fact eaten Ebon Maw, the original dragon from Twisted Tree Line. Um, rather than spawning at 5 minutes like Ebon Maw did, he spawns at 10 and respawns every 5 minutes after that. He has considerable more health than Ebon Maw did, but no armor. His attack is also weaker, but scales better than his did. And he has several different kinds of attacks. One is a pull that pulls everything in the arena toward him. One's a slam that hits things that are closer to him, and one just a basic sort of attack. But every single one applies a stack of an armor and magic resist debuff. And I believe the pull itself applies 15 stacks, and I think every single one applies like minus 0 0.5, but it really starts to stack up once you have a lot of them in there, and he gets there really quickly. But once you kill him, he gets, or he gives your entire team, regardless of where they are, a nice little buff. It's still Crest of Crushing Wrath, but instead of the plus 1% to attack and spell damage per champion level that Ebon Maw gave, his adds health and mana regen, and attack speed and 20% CDR, which in general I think is pretty awesome. Uh, the altars, which you will talk about just in a moment, I think make it make up for it. In fact, let's talk about the altars right now. What can I say? You catch them almost like you do in Dominion. Standing on one, or, well, controlling one, gives your team plus four gold per kill of anything on the map, be it minions, champions, monsters in the, in the jungle, whatever. If you control two, it's both of them, you get plus 10% AD and plus 10% AP. Very nice. And once you capture them, they are locked for 90 seconds. After that, you continue to control it, but you can't relock it. The only thing is you have to keep defending it for the rest of the game or until they capture it. Pretty cool, I think, in general. Um, I really like the altar mechanic. It gives vision. Unfortunately, I feel like the jungle is a little too small now, so it's really difficult to sneak around past them. Makes ganking a little harder, but I think the altars themselves are really nice. It creates a lot of tension back and forth, walking between the two for the teams to fight over. And, in addition, there's a speed buff right in the middle, which I don't think is supposed to give vision. In most of the games I've played, it does not. Um, it seems to be that there's a bug there where sometimes it'll give vision. Not supposed to do that. Speaking of vision, however, because the altars give you some of that, they're very important. And because of the item changes, yes, not just new stuff, they changed some of the old stuff, there are no more wards. There are, they've taken sort of the Dominion model here, where there's no warding, none whatsoever. There is an Oracle's Extract that lets you see invisible things, um, like in Dominion, and they've in fact taken a couple different items from Dominion to replace them, since it's a much smaller and shorter sort of uh, arena, that's the word I'm looking for, 
And for example, they take Bloodthirster out in favor of the Dominion version, which is pretty nice, I feel. As for the new items themselves, we have a couple different very exciting new options, uh, mostly targeted at making uh, spellcasters and a couple different other things more viable on the map, and some of them I think will find their way into Summoner's Rift. We'll just have to see how that goes. But first we have Blackfire Torch, which is a very nice addition to any spellcaster's routine. Um, it's a little broken at the moment, I feel, because it applies to dots as well, the 5% uh, damage to max, or 5% of target's max health and magic damage. So, for example, Teemo's auto attack, every single one applies a dot, which automatically applies 5% of the target's maximum health and magic damage. Little much, but it makes burst casters and anything of that sort a little more powerful on the map and more. Oh, that's what I'm looking for. They'll last a little longer, I feel, with the uh, the general sort of AD setup and twisted tree line. Maybe this one will find its way on Summoner's Rift. It's nice to have an alternative to Madreds, and the tanky DPS has been quite powerful for a while, so maybe this will help sway opinions a little bit toward other magical sorts of things. Moving on, we have Overlord's Blood Mail, which is the replacement for Warmogs, I do believe. Doesn't give nearly as much health, but it has a passive wherever you kill things, you gain more health over time. Pretty sweet, I do feel. It's simple and cheaper. Not much cheaper, actually, now that I look at it. Only 450-ish. Eh, whatever. Next we have the Wicked Hatchet. The answer to poor, poor Mundo. Uh, what can I say? Every attack does 50% reduced healing. Come on, why the Grievous Wounds, man? He's the king of Twisted Tree Line, but... Yeah, Mundo, why? Mundo hate. But it's awesome. It really is pretty cool. I like it. Another answer to Tanky DPS. I love it. Next we have... Lord Van Damme's Pillager, which is the AD caster item we've all been waiting for. This one freaking better find its way into the other modes, because it's just so cool. AD casters, all of them, love it so much. Tried it on Garen, that's in fact in the video from yesterday. It's so good. Renekton loves it. Talon loves it. Ugh, this is going to be so good. I just can't wait for this to appear in other modes. I want it. I want it. Give me now. Next we have the Blade of the Ruined King, an upgrade from the Gold Cutlass. Uh, this one, it's very interesting. It's very swingy. Let's put it that way. It deals more damage. I think this is in fact a Blood Rage replacement. I don't remember if that got pulled off, but it's still really cool. Deals extra damage and heals you for that much. Uh, drains health and move speed rather than giving a normal slow. Which I think is really interesting. Um, it's certainly powerful on something like Hecarim, which has been appearing a lot in the PBE because he got that new skin. But this thing in general seems like it's really cool. I hope this one also finds its way onto Summoner's Rift. There will be a lot of interesting things coming up with it. I hope so. Soul Sight Lantern, obviously not finding its way to Summoner's Rift. Um, unless they, I don't know, remove wards or something. But this is the very obvious Riggle's Lantern version for here. It's really nice. Gives area and actually drops um, detection on the enemy. So even if they move out of the area for a little while, you'll be able to see them. Um, I think it's 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 nice, it, especially with all the bushes that are sitting around in Twisted Tree Line. So even though you don't have wards, you'll get to see what's actually going on. And next we have... Wooglet's Witch Cap, which is the uh, Rabadon's Death Cap for the map. I really like how they gave it move speed, which has been quite a problem, I feel, for the uh, the AP casters, especially on Twisted Tree Line, because they don't quite have the, uh, especially the burst casters, they don't have much in the way of uh, jumping around like most other champions do nowadays. So this is really nice. And finally, beyond that, we have the two replacements for the elixirs, we have the Icar of Illumination for the APs, and the Icar of Rage for the ADs. Deals more damage to turrets for rage, and gives you mana regen for illumination. Both quite nice, I feel. Um, twice as expensive, but significantly more powerful than the other elixirs. I think these will be nice additions. Definitely a Twisted Tree Line only thing, but all in all, really cool.
Lastly, I'd like to note a particularly interesting change to the game is that they added more gold when you start. You start now with 825, which is basically a pair of boots more than you started with before. So you could start with Doran's Blade plus boots and, well, a large number of combination of things without having changed it to the uh, Prospector's Blades and such from Dominion. I think it's really nice. Uh, the set lets you gives you a lot more options than you did before for starting out, and since there will be a lot more skirmishes in this mode than there are in Summoner's Rift, you have a lot of different things you can do to prepare for the enemy, and it makes jungling a lot more standable, I think so. And I think, in general, I've heard some complaints about the gold on the map being less than it was before. I think it's actually about the same. It's just moved around a little more. There's some more up front, like I just noted, there's some more that's in the altars that you have to capture, and then, then the uh, the jungle gives about the same. The uh, minions don't give quite as much, but it assumes you're controlling an altar, so that's kind of important. And as every time you capture an altar, you also get some gold, so there's that as well. And if those keep swinging back and forth, then there's going to be a lot of gold gain on the team. And all in all, I feel this map is an improvement old, over the old Dominion. I don't think it's perfect. I wish there were that there was a little more to the jungle. You could certainly jungle regularly and effectively, but there's not too much to it. Run around, kill minions, control the altars, and go gank. That's all there is to it. There's no buffs for you to take or steal. There ain't too much that you can take from the enemy without them seeing you doing it. But other than that, also, TLDR, this is the map as far as the changes go, I really like the change with the thick walls, so you can't just flash over it onto the enemy Dexus. But, you know, whatever. All in all, I'm looking forward to the new Twisted Tree line. It's great, it's exciting, I'm looking forward to it going live. And, well, this has been the video. Thanks for watching, everyone. I've been Gin. Did you enjoy it? Please hit the like button. I could use the support. As for more content, tell me what I should talk about in the future. Anything in particular on this map you'd like to see me talk about? Do you want me to try and figure out some jungle roots or something? Also, I'd like to point you all toward my friend Volcano Style. He's been doing some great Twisted Tree Line videos leading up to the end of Season 2, and he's got some great analysis as a fairly seasoned player of the old Twisted Tree Line of the new one. I love his stuff. You should too. Go watch him. But, thanks for watching everyone. I've been Gin. And you have been watching me talk about a video game. Bye!